Good morning, folks. We're watching solar tornadoes dance in over the northeastern limb. We've got storms, storm alerts, an earthquake, and top science news, but let's begin over at spaceweathernews.com. Start with a closer look at these filaments. Vertically oriented prominence ropes turning in on a line as high latitude filaments are becoming more numerous sun wide. Last 24 hours overall were relatively calm. A few small pops occurred at and just over the departing limb, tiny coronal hole on the equator swinging through. Yesterday we saw a coronal hole stream on set in the solar wind and around reverberation time the solar wind speed elevated once again, driving a second round of storms that was slightly stronger than the reverberation would have been alone. Posted this to Twitter yesterday showing how solar activity has been on the rise pretty much all month. 211 angstroms, still just a bit too long of a spectrum right now. It makes those tiny coronal holes appear huge. Although they are small in reality, they've got solar wind coming our way and Earth's magnetic connection switched over to them yesterday as Indonesia took another six-pointer, hopefully an after-effect of their larger ones there last week. Let's go to GO16. Got a lot of weather to cover today. Midwest states isolated lightning line kicked off midday and ballooned into major storm cells that took out more power around the Great Lakes and dropped a tornado north of the border as it entered southern Ontario. Gorgeous shots here, that twister that avoided everyone nearby. We've got to have eyes on the water. The east and central Pacific have development of twin systems with different ideas about what sort of travel they want to take across the ocean. Hawaii, I will update that storm track in a few days. West Pacific is not slowing down either. This one going to run right over the high activity areas that have rumbled already this month and then move on to Japan. Back to Hawaii, take in the newest few hundred acres of U.S. land here off the coast. Although the bay has disappeared, one cannot help but be in awe of these sentinel shots of the lava flow. Couple cool Jupiter stories the last week and a half, including one on metallic hydrogen production inside these giant gas planets. And for Jupiter specifically, a growing phase study found that it must have had irregular growth periods, where the midpoint was around 30 to 50 Earth masses. A point close to the hearts of real observers, there is truly no excuse for data and methods not to be published along with results. This article details a good bit about how the pharma companies have used that to game the journals, and how many of those works can never be verified, but which didn't stop them from helping their drugs get through the FDA. Folks, there are some big changes over at QuakeWatch.net. As we go over the new look of the Prediction Center page, I've added some steps and clarity for you. Remember, the next contest winner will get tickets to Observing the Frontier 2019, and the pool for correct prediction of a Magnitude 7 event is now $900. For those still looking for their foothold in earthquake forecasting, the stats page might have some new direction for you as it's got a new declaration. You might know we were battling ourselves, model versus model, the simpler, older model has dominated. In fact, I must declare the newer, expanded model a failure by comparison. Top right of these pages, Davidson 2017 papers detail that original model, which is the number one forecasting model on Earth in terms of joule energy capture success. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. Whether it's the Disaster Prediction app, our website, our new book, or you show your support right here in the comments section, we do greatly appreciate it. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.